In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to regenerate thumbnails in WordPress. I'm going to show you why you do it, the situations where you'd want to do it, and the consequences of doing it too often. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I'll answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's regenerate some thumbnails. This is a blog post on a hotel booking website that I created a while ago. If you want to see the full tutorial on how to create a hotel booking website, click on the link in the description down below or the card up above. It shows you how to build this exact website right here. It's pretty awesome, straightforward to do. Check out that video. So to do the regenerate thumbnails, we're going to add an image to this post. Let's go to edit post and add an image. Just going to pick one from the media library. I'm going to choose this one right here. Click on select. And we see on the right-hand side that we can choose image size. If you're using the regular WordPress editor, the classic editor, you also have these options on the right-hand side where you click on the image and you can choose the size of the image. So if we choose thumbnail, for example, the image shrinks down to a thumbnail size. Medium, a little bit bigger, large, even bigger, full size, doesn't get any bigger because there's not enough space, but it would get bigger if it could. So if we choose thumbnail, we have it set to 150 by 150. That's the default thumbnail size in WordPress. So let's center this and update. And now let's view this page, view the post, and we see our fancy thumbnail right there. And regenerate thumbnails allows you to resize these thumbnails. For example, if at some point down the road, you've created a thousand posts, which would be awesome, and all those posts are getting traffic and you want them to be updated and look proper, but you find the thumbnails are too small now. You're using bigger thumbnails. You've gone into the WordPress settings. If we go to the dashboard, if I can get there, can't click properly. If we go to the settings and media, you've come in here and changed the thumbnail size to 300 by 300 because the bigger thumbnail just looks better. And now if we go back to our post editor and we refresh, and we add another image. This time we're gonna upload a new image because let's say this is a new post that you're making, so you're adding new images. Let's go to image and then upload. And let's pick a random image, kayaks in the back of an RV. Now if we go to thumbnail, we see it is 300 by 300, not 150 by 150. Like our original one right here, 150 by 150. Because we changed that, in the media settings. Now whenever you upload an image, it's gonna create a thumbnail that is of a larger size, 300 by 300. So this is where the problem comes in. Like I was saying, your older posts, they might have the smaller size thumbnails, but you want them to have the bigger size. So let's fix that. I click on update to update this page. And now if I go back into the dashboard, go to plugins and add new, we're gonna look up regenerate thumbnails. This is the plugin we want right here. It has over 1 million installs. It's quite a popular plugin. ShortPixel has another one right here. And I love ShortPixel, that's why I'm pointing it out. I'm gonna install the 1 million plus install one though. That's the one you want. And then we activate it. If you're installing this on a live site, you might wanna back up your site first, just in case. Click the card up above or the description down below. I'll show you how to back up your site quickly and easily because then you can revert back to a good version of your site just in case something goes wrong. It's pretty rare, but sometimes it happens. Now we have our plugin installed and activated. Let's go to tools and then regenerate thumbnails. Up at the very top, it shows us the two reasons you normally wanna use this. Change of thumbnail sizes right here and change of WordPress theme. If you ever change a WordPress theme mid stride, the thumbnails that were created by the old theme may not be the same as a new theme. Thumbnails and featured images because themes will have different sizes of featured images sometimes. So this will also help with that problem. And if you have lots of images on your site, this might take a long time. And here it says if you go to the media library and click on regenerate thumbnails, you can regenerate the thumbnail for specific images if you want to. I'm gonna keep skip regenerating existing corrected size thumbnails checked. That would be for example, if you change the thumbnail size or if you change your theme and you've created some posts already in the new thumbnail size or the new theme, then you will have the correct size thumbnails, correct size images. So you can skip all those because you don't have to regenerate those. You just regenerate the old ones. You can also delete old thumbnails. So in this example, we'd be deleting this old one because it's smaller. But the problem is that your posts still link to these old ones. We have to update all of our posts as well. So it's not just a matter of regenerating thumbnails. We also have to update all the links, all the image links in our posts. So we're going to keep that unselected. 
I'm going to regenerate thumbnails for all six attachments. This might take a long time if you have a big site. In my case, this site is quite small, just a few images, and we're all done. It took 38 seconds. If I go back to the post we're working on, if I click on this image, it still has the 150 by 150. If I refresh the page, click on this image, it still has the 150 by 150. If I go and view the post, it still has the small image. What we have to do is click on the image, change the size to medium, change it back to thumbnail, and now it shows the new image size. Click on update, come back out here, refresh, and we have our new thumbnail size. And as I mentioned, this works for featured images, this works for any image size. If I go back to, really quick, into our settings and media, this is the default image sizes in WordPress. So every WordPress site will have these sizes. These will be 150 by default, actually, not 300. So these are the default image sizes. But a theme can have any number of image size requirements, so you might actually be making a whole lot more images than just these ones. And what's also funny, in the media library, if we go here, we just see one image. But if you go to the media settings, we see three images. And some themes will make 10 images of different sizes for different places in the theme. But we only ever see one here. And if we go to the live server where this website exists, this site's hosted locally. So if I head over to my flywheel, local by flywheel, this is what I host local sites with. I have a tutorial for setting this up in the card up above and the description down below if you want to check this out. Works for Mac and Windows. Click on this little button here to open the file folder system. Go to app, public, underscore WP dash content, uploads 2020-06. This is the image we uploaded just now. And when an image is uploaded, we uploaded this one right here specifically. This is the original. WordPress created one, two, three, four, five different versions of that image. Why? For site speed because the, these images are smaller in size, smaller in dimension, and they're smaller in size as well. This one is 89 kilobytes in size, the original. It's already quite compressed. You'll have images in here that are five or six or 10 or 15 megabytes. If you're a photography website and you don't know about image size and site speed, you're gonna have full size images in there that are huge, just massive images. And then WordPress makes it so you're not loading those massive images every time. So this 300 by 225, is only 20 kilobytes. That's four and a half times smaller than the original, which means it's gonna load four and a half times faster. And that's why this is done. We now have the bigger thumbnail size for this image because it was uploaded after I changed the settings, but all the ones that are uploaded before are gonna have a 150 by 150 that's no longer gonna be used on your site, taking up server space. Those are hard to identify. It's really hard to clean those up, but you can go into the media library and find them. If I go back to 2019, these all have a 150 by 150 thumbnail that you can see here. If I click through these, eventually I'll find that exact one that I replaced. This is it. No, that's not it. Eventually I'll find the exact one that I replaced and I can delete it if I want to. I could delete all these 150 by 150s because I'm now using 300 by 300 on my site. But if you regenerate thumbnails multiple times or you switch themes multiple times, you might have, instead of, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the original of this image, eight different versions of this image, you might have 20 different versions. If the themes you're using have very different image requirements. So you can have a whole lot of images from just one image over time. And that takes a lot of space in your server. And you can use a plugin like Media Cleaner or Media Deduper to help you clean up those files. It won't identify thumbnail images in here that aren't being used anymore, but it will help you find images inside of the media library that aren't being used. So for example, if this was not on a post, it would say this one's not on a post. Should we delete it? And you can delete it, and it will delete all the thumbnails for that image as well, but it won't help you find old thumbnail sizes of images that are still used on your site. So that you have to do manually. We know we're not using the 150 by 150 anymore. We could just go through and delete them all. It's a bit of manual work, but it's worth the extra server savings that you get. And while we're on the topic of the media library, check out this tutorial right here, which shows you how to add folders to media library, making it much more organized, especially for large sites. And while we're on the topic of organizing things into folders, check out this tutorial right here, which shows you how to organize your pages and posts into folders as well. Two very useful videos, so check those out. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.